Now, Uganda is set to host the ninth Commonwealth Youth, Youth Ministers meeting later this month. The first uh, five-day meeting is expected to bring together at least 500 guests, including 52 youth ministers from the Commonwealth member countries, youth leaders, senior government officials and observers. The meeting is aimed at sharing good experiences among member countries, discussing youth programming and their role in development from bilateral relations and democracy. With me in the studio is uh, Lynn Robinson, the head of Programs uh, Youth Division at the Commonwealth Secretariat. Um, you're very welcome, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you very much, Malcolm. And good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Um, this is not your first time in Uganda? No, I've been here before um, in the planning process, so this is my last visit before the meeting. My first time to meet a person from Jamaica. <laughs> Oh yes, my God. I only see them on video. But anyway, <laughs> let's yes. get to the issues, Lynn. You have this very, very important yes. high-level meeting of youth ministers from across the world in Commonwealth countries. Um, the first question before maybe I go to the agenda of the Commonwealth meeting, you have a youth population boom in these Commonwealth countries mm. and they are increasingly becoming a problem to governments mm. uh, because their uh, employment levels are really terrible, as you know. Uh, not only in Uganda, mm -hmm. uh, then you have uh, uh, access to affordable credit is not yes, there, yes. then it is youth have to business, etc. It is the challenge is Great. glaring. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yet we see these meetings happening in different countries mm -hmm. all the time. This is not the first, this is the ninth. Yes. We go ahead to see governments um, increasingly ignoring the you know challenges that are facing the youth much as they keep promising but mm. when you see on paper what is being done is, is really uh, minimal mm. so this meeting is coming in here yes. how different is it going to be mm. and then we can go into the agenda well, well th this meeting is the ninth one and we have the youth ministers meetings every four years so it's not as regular as some of the other meetings of importance and in this youth ministers meeting, we have been seeing, you know, increasing developments for youth development. Um, indeed, the, the, the last ministers meeting was held in Papua New Guinea in 2013. And since then, we have seen a lot of changes. For example, at the global scene, the UN put in place a UN envoy. In the Commonwealth, we launched a youth development index to measure the progress on youth development so that we can hold ourselves, governments and stakeholders accountable. So even though these meetings are happening, we're in a sector, the youth sector, that is just growing. And it's growing because the youth population is getting more dynamic, as you mentioned, there are many issues. In this meeting, we try not to see young people as problems. We try to frame them as assets for their societies. So in this meeting, we'll be examining how can we harness the potential of the young people resident in the country. So in Uganda, which has probably about 70% of the people under 30, young people under 30, um, our challenge in this meeting is to challenge our governments and ourselves in the Commonwealth on how do we harness the potential inherent in these young people. Mm. But, but how is the feeling? Do you see governments uh, taking the youth as a priority? Do they, do they know their perspectives? Do they know their uh, priorities, mm. really? Is, is, the, is that feeling there or it stops at the political level? No, actually I'm seeing a different picture. Actually we have seen a lot of political will towards young people. So in many Commonwealth countries they are saying youth are the priority. What this meeting will do, it is going to say now beyond that argument of them being the priority, how can we resource and finance youth development. Mm -hmm. So the theme of this meeting is resourcing and financing youth development because beyond the political commitment, beyond putting them as a priority, beyond listening to them, we must now put in place the infrastructure, the enabling environment that supports their development and their empowerment. Lynn, how much impact have these meetings had on mm -hmm. you know, influencing, say, policy or development of youth uh, programs uh, mm -hmm. in, in countries uh, that the Commonwealth uh, adopted? Now the, these meetings are, can be said to be talk shops. They can, you know, most times you have these, but not this meeting. This meeting um, and the youth meetings we have had have been geared towards action and practical, tangible outcomes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in the last minister's meeting, we talked about having a youth development index that measures the progress across every country in the world on what youth are doing. It would be interesting for you to look at that index to see where Uganda has placed in relation to other countries. What we are doing there and what we have done there is to say we need to move beyond the rhetoric and to put practical things in place. I'll give you one more example where we have had countries that have committed to supporting youth participation. And in this case, I'll use Uganda. So Uganda is the best country in the world in terms of having youth in parliament. In the Commonwealth, it is a best practice. What we will do in this meeting, we will look at what Uganda is doing and share it with Jamaica, Australia, UK, 
to see what best practices we have in this country. So these meetings are not just talk shops. We actually bring people together and they exchange ideas, exchange ideas that will change the lives of young people. So one of the key mandates of the summit, I understand, is to push for the inclusion of young people mm -hmm. in uh, you know, development planning and ensuring their contributions are prioritized, like mm -hmm. you were saying, at the highest levels of government. Mm -hmm. So has this been achieved to your, in, your, in your opinion, beyond it, what you've just told me? No, it will always be a challenge. We, so we will continue to put youth on the agenda and there will always be issues. And what we will try to do is continue to press for youth inclusion at the highest levels. Okay. So I hope we will be able to see that in this meeting, which is why Uganda is a perfect host because Uganda has a good model of how to include youth in decision making. So should I then uh, conclude that uh, you know, youth and employment, social and political risk to any government is a key, uh, is key only on the radar of, it, of, yes, of your it, agenda going it, forward? It will be, but we will not look at young people just in terms of their being, being a risk. We will look at them being an asset. And therefore, if they're an asset, and, and how we support them to, unf to bring out their potential, we will see the, the positive coming out to support our countries. Because young people, if they are work with right in the right context, will actually make a big difference for national development and to achieve the sustainable development goals. That is our aim for this meeting, that the youth will be seen as a priority and we will harness their potential for national development. Thank you, Lynn Robinson, uh, for visiting NTV uh, to talk to us about the Commonwealth uh, Youth Ministers meeting that will be uh, on the uh, first 31st of July, July to the 4th, and it will be the 9th. Uh, we'll Come be looking up, forward to uh, listening uh, yeah. to the ministers and what they have to say you know, as far as contributing to the development of youth in Africa, Commonwealth countries is concerned. We are Thank going to take much. a short break. We'll be back with more stories making headlines today here on NTV at 1.